Whitnall's ligament is a condensation of connective tissue around the levator, which has a suspensory function for all these tissues. And it turns the pull of the levator from anterior posterior to inferior superior. It's about 10 millimeters superior to the lateral tubercle. And it actually inserts partially into the lacrimal gland. Lockwood's ligament is the inferior suspens suspensory ligament, and it is just a thickening of tenons around the inferior extraocular muscles. And here is another nice picture depicting Wh Whitnall's ligament here, and your inferior suspensory ligaments here, Lockwood's. Now let's talk about the um, vascular supply to the eyelids. The eyelids have um, supply from both the internal carotid and the external carotid. The internal carotid via the ophthalmic, lacrimal, and supraorbital vessels, and from the external carotid via the angular and temporal vessels. And here's just a picture demonstrating some of that circulation from your temporal and angular vessels here onto the lids. And also there are anastomoses from deeper within the orbit, which we already talked about. Um, there's a marginal arcade near the lid margin, and there's a peripheral arcade, which is superior to the tarsus between the levator and Muller's. So in your upper lid, 25 would be the superior peripheral arcade, and 26 would be the marginal arcade. The lower lid may only have one of these, which is depicted by 32 here. And here is a nice cross-section of your eyelid demonstrating the anterior lamella here, consisting of skin and orbicularis muscle. The posterior lamella, which in the inferior portion of the eyelid where we have tarsal plate, consists of the tarsal plate and conge, above which you will encounter other structures. Mueller's muscle inserting superiorly onto the tarsal plate and the levator aponeurosis which sends little tendrils into the skin and orbicularis muscle and also the anterior surface of the tarsal plate. This is our orbital septum coming from the arcus marginalis and inserting onto levator aponeurosis, which creates our lid crease here. And here's our preaponeurotic fat, which is a very important landmark when doing eyelid surgery because this is going to tell you that you're in the right plane to find that levator aponeurosis just below it. And here's a cross-section of the lower lid depicti depicting similar structures with your inferior oblique muscle here, your orbital fat here, your orbital septum here. Lower lid retractors, which are the analog of the uh, levator in the upper lid. So, quick question to see if everybody's still awake. Which of the following structures lies within the annulus of Zinn? Is it A, the frontal nerve, B, the trochlear, C, the nasociliary nerve, or D, the superior ophthalmic vein? C, the nasociliary nerve. So pat yourself on the back if you learned that one already, and you can move on to another topic. For those of you who need a quick refresher, here is that picture again, demonstrating your nasociliary nerve within the annulus, along with the superior and inferior division of cranial nerve 3 and your abducens nerve. Remember our LFTs are outside the annulus.